Pena, thank you so much for joining us for In The Moment, our weekly talk show, trying to bring you some motivation and inspiration. I'm here now with my co-host, Gelly Akenblit, who is the founder of Networking Phoenix, Zenobia Mertel, who is a columnist, a life and style columnist for InspiredMedia360.com. And look who we have In The Moment with us today. Yay. My former co-anchor, <laughs> Fields Mosley, my former um, work husband, Fields Mosley. <laughs> we um, spent many hours together. I'm so glad to have you on the show. And Fields has gone through, if you don't recognize him, um, we used to be on the news together. You've gone through a major life transformation, uh, made a lot of changes out of news, which is all you knew for 20 plus years, uh, into a major role with the government. And we're going to talk to you about making that transition, some of the things that you've learned. Also, there's some breaking news actually going on today that we're going to, I'm going to have to talk to you about having to do with uh, Sheriff Arpaio, former Sheriff Arpaio, new Sheriff Paul Penzone, and Tent City. So... I know you're looking forward to getting to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, what? Um, we'll see what I can say. Let's talk about this um, uh, March Madness. Did you watch it, Moses? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so um, huge ratings. But one thing that I thought was really interesting, by the way, um, Phoenix was the host city, and mm -hmm. I thought they did an amazing job. Yes. I mean, we showed up really, really well. Um, but I, w I saw this, this uh, trending about March Madness, and one of the articles I read was that the March Madness app set a new live stream record. NCAA says there were 98 million streams of this year's tournament via this live app. That's up 31% from last year. What do you think that this says, Mosley, about the way that people are consuming not only media, but, but sports in particular? Well, you've you got a phone right next to you. I think that's what it says, that yeah. everyone's watching things on their phone, and they're watching things where they are. And I, and I, I hate to say it, I watched the games, uh, one and a half games on Sunday, then I had something to do on Monday night, and I couldn't watch the championship game, which was amazing by all accounts. Yeah. But I, I think everything's going mobile. So everything that we're, I'm doing in my current job is all about reaching people on their mobile devices. And I think it's really interesting. I think the, the big question when you talk about commercial enterprises, though, like the NCAA or CBS or whoever is carrying, uh, it was March Madness on CBS, but uh, how are they monetizing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not from selling apps. It's it's still advertising, but that's, that's a real question. Can you can you hit your goals that way? Yeah. Well, that's a buzzkill kind of question. Oh, well, I'm huh? sorry. <laughs> Who brought the grown-up to the party? I'm what sorry. Well, well, let's talk about the fun part. Uh, um, you know, and one of the, the last things I'll touch on with this, um, Gelly, I wanted to get your take because um, the guy who created this app, uh, Mio Babic, he was quoted as saying, uh, how do we make the experience even more interactive for fans so they're already looking ahead to next year? How are they make it more interactive? So in your coaching and dealing with uh, business leaders, this has to be something that you're talking about interaction. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Interacting and constantly innovating and thinking ahead of the curve, right? Because we as consumers, we just demand, you know, we, we live in the age of the Facebook and everything moves so quickly. So you have to be ahead of the curve, especially when you're business and providing a tool like this, you got to keep blowing people out of the water year, year and year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, constantly. even though you hit those numbers and already it's like, what's next, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did the Mertel clan watch the tournament? Of course. And I will tell you, some of us watched it on the phone, some of us watched it on TV. We were all doing our thing split up and just catching the updates. So absolutely, they have to keep innovating and revolutionizing it to keep everyone I interested. can just see your house. Everyone's just walking around, <laughs> watching, eating, cruising, Picking having fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So mostly, let's talk a little bit to, uh, to you about your new role. So you were, um, you were a news anchor. I mean, basically, you graduated from college and you went right into the business, right? Sure. I was a reporter. I was a one-man band is mm -hmm. what they, they call them digital uh, or multimedia journalists yeah. these days. But yeah. I was a one-man band straight out of school carrying a big heavy camera on my shoulder. And that was, that. I know how passionate you are about news. Like, what drew you into that? Drew me into it in the first place. Yeah. Well, I needed what did you a job. About it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, I really enjoyed. I always enjoyed breaking news. Um, I always enjoyed telling stories. And and once I shifted majors in college and uh, went from a more technical degree to journalism, I really liked the aspect of trying to tell the truth in a and and in a limited amount of time using pictures and video and all of that. And of course, it's all evolved. And, and you know, people that work for me now, they laugh at me. Yeah, I learned how to edit tape to tape. And uh, that was, <laughs> and they go, what's a tape? And very weird. And, but, it, you know, that's, those are all the basis of everything that we still do in the TV industry. And, and my team now, we still, I mean, I'm a photographer. I'm a digital journalist who works for me. Yeah, let, let's talk and, a little uh, bit about that transition. So um, before we talk about, 
because you're now the communications director for Maricopa County. Right. Um, but I want to hear a little bit from you about making that transition because when you do something that you love, and that's all you know for so long. And I think a lot of people this will resonate with that maybe are making some sort of transition in their work life. Um, how did you go about making that transition? News has changed and, a, and yeah. a lot about the business has changed. So you decided it was a good time to make this transition, but was it, was it difficult? It is difficult. It's very, you know, a lot more difficult than you might imagine, depending on what job you get outside of the of your industry that you've known for 20 plus years. So, you know, I, I transitioned to the industry of government, and you don't realize it is government is an industry in our economy, whether you like that or not. And uh, but you transition to it, and government's complicated, and government does a lot of jobs that nobody can make money at. That's why government does them, right? And uh, that's but the county itself is bigger than many states. We have the fourth largest county population in the country mm -hmm. with 4.2 million people living here. And we have 55 streams of business. Mm -hmm. So there's all these different things to learn about. I see a lot of pictures that you post, and a lot of them <laughs> are you mountain biking. I mean, are you finding time to do more things that you love since you have a more regular work schedule? You know, it, it's great that in the evening, if my kids have an event or something like that, I'm able to be a part of that. I've, I've gotten far more active in scouting, which my older son is involved in, and I'm mm -hmm. the scout master now, which is <laughs> it kind of, it, and talk about managing an organization. Now I'm managing a bunch of kids. And, and, and you know, and I would say, Carrie, I probably couldn't have done it if I was still a news person, not only yeah. just because of the schedule, but just because I didn't really have the yeah. capacity or the knowledge. And now with my experience and what I'm doing now, you're going, oh, well, that system applies to this group over here. And yeah. This. So, but yeah, I try to get out on the bike at least once a week. I love to see those pictures two, of you three. actually out having fun. Uh, we only have a few seconds sure. left, but I do have to talk to you about a couple more things. First of all, was I fa your favorite co anchor that you ever anchored with? On oh, the news? By, far by far and far. away. Now I'm, offending, I'm offending women across the country. <laughs> yeah, um, but tell us really quickly about this big deal. Um, it just came out yeah. that Paul Penzone is doing away with Tent City, and that is a very, very very big deal. It's changing the entire trajectory uh, for the sheriff's office. Yeah. Sure, and I don't I don't speak for MCSO, but I speak for the Board of Supervisors, and I know Sheriff Penzone has come in, and he's had a lot of conversations if, with most of the supervisors, and certainly the chairman, uh, Denny Barney from District 1 right now, quite often, and he did about this too. He said, I'm going to announce this. And, uh, and this is a conversation that's been going on. It went on with Chief Jerry Sheridan and Sheriff Arpaio mm -hmm. uh, before Sheriff Penzone was elected. So this has been part of the discussion because the jail population has dropped. And how much does it cost to keep a sixth jail open, mm -hmm. men's jail, and uh, whenever you, you have bed space in hardened facilities? So that's a conversation that's gone on for a while. What would that mean in a, a, you know, a potential savings or reallocation of funds? It's not really savings. But it's, uh, you know, can you move funds to something that was already a priority From an that's image been neglected? standpoint, what do you think it does? Because, you know, that Attempt City was always very sure. controversial. I, I mean, I've covered it. You've covered it. It's, it. But, you know, what do you think it does from an image standpoint? This is me putting on my marketing hat now and, and telling you, I, I think that this is a huge deal for the county. You know, the Sheriff Arpaio, for better or worse, became the county's brand. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the supervisors, they're not looking to capitalize on the brand, but the brand should be a beautiful place that happens to contain the capital city of Arizona, Phoenix. Yeah. It contains the state capital as well. And and we have all these amazing parks and recreational opportunities and great restaurants. And, and March and, Madness. And March Madness. <laughs> and, and fantastic yeah, events. Super Bowls, yeah, you know, music events, festivals. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the addition of the free free music this year? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Great headline that's bands a, and whatnot. That's a great point. Is, is so the there's a lot going on and I think, so from a marketing point of view, I think it's, it's a positive thing mm -hmm. um, because it was looked at outside of the sphere of Maricopa County mm -hmm. as, a, as a concentration camp, any number mm -hmm. of things. That yeah. it, clearly it's not and never was, but it, uh, I think it, it helps the image. I think more than anything from a practical point of view with the Board of Supervisors though, it's a, a potential to, to reallocate funds and put them toward other priorities within the detention facilities and the MCSO mission. All right, I'm getting a hard wrap on your side. Right, well, I'm sorry. I'm, you told me I had six minutes. You know, We've only talked for two. I don't know why you're wrapping right. All right, we're going to move on and thrive with Gelly now. Um, so this is really interesting what you're yeah. going to talk to us about today, Gel. Um, the art and practice of break through thinking. Tell me about that. Yeah, so this is so fascinating. So recently, neuroscientists discovered that, you know, those moments that we have, like the eureka, the genius moments, so there's an actual science to it, and it has to do with how well we're able to switch between our focused brain and our meandering brain. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is 
um, our focus mind, we know what the focus mind is, right? That's what gets us through the day. But the meandering mind is a network in, in our brains that uh, is our, the genius council. Like this is where all the creative stuff comes from. And so what they were saying is that when you are, if you've got a problem that you're focusing on, if, if you can switch some kind of a mindless activity to let your mind meander, you're actually going to come up with these um, eureka moments and these innovation uh, you know, ideas without even forcing, without forcing yourself to do. So how, yeah. that's how you get yourself in the zone. So the question is, how do you get yourself into that zone? Yeah. Uh, which is a to great question. To have your eureka <laughs> moments. Yes. Right, right. So there's a few ways. One of them is literally to sleep on it, right? So they interviewed um, Adam Shayer, if I'm saying his name right. He's the co-creator of Siri. And he was saying that he would literally sleep on it, right? So he would go to bed thinking on a problem. He would noodle on it. And he would wake up with innovative ideas. So what he was doing is he was tapping into that half asleep, half awake moments that mm -hmm. we have, right? And that's when our genius council is absolutely in overdrive. So that that's literally how he got through the whole Siri process. Albert Einstein, he had this issue for decades, couldn't come up with an answer, gave up, went to sleep, woke up uh, with the theory of relativity, right? <laughs> that's right. So I'm try that jackpot. Tonight. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm jackpot. sure I'll wake up with something brilliant, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, World but. Peace. <laughs> but they were saying that the most effective way to get yourself into this mindless activity is by walking. So mm. research already tells us that by walking, we uh, become more creative. But so interesting. They interviewed over 200, not interviewed, but they researched over 200 um, innovators and um, inventors over the, horse of, uh, over the course of history. And they found out that all of them had a habit of walking. Every oh, single yeah. one of them, right? So uh, Charles Dickens, Tchaikovsky, um, Beethoven. They, they didn't have a car. They, you're right, you're That's right. Good they, point, that is a good point. But they would all have a habit of taking long walks, and it was a part of their routine. Yeah, and, and a part of that is, um, Mo's just that we have 30 seconds left in this segment, but part of that is kind of getting outside and taking a break. I mean, that's what yeah. I, when nature. I was asking you about yeah. kind of your, yeah. You're that's that's something I don't, I don't ride with earbuds or, or hike with earbuds or anything like that. It's all about the quiet, and I do. I do think of a lot of things, and if I do think of something cool, I put it in my notes on my phone mm -hmm. or I, I do yeah. a quick uh, audio yeah. audio reminder for myself. Because yeah, I, I'll be thinking about stuff and it'll be organizational issues or somebody isn't quite, you know, performance issues with a staff or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, you, you need to make a note because as soon as you don't, you get back to the chaos of your yeah. family yeah. life or yep. your work, it's gone. You need it that quiet gone. time, you oh, know? I, I, I mean, it. it always happens <laughs> to me though. If I don't write it down, then the next oh. day I'm like, what was that brilliant what, what idea? That? I had? Yeah. I'll be like Einstein 20 years later. I'll be like, <laughs> you, saw, you solved cancer one day, yeah. All right, thanks so much, yeah, Gail. That's great information. Um, now I want to take you guys inside our Inspired Media 360 studios because we had a crazy, crazy day. Um, yesterday was Arizona Gives Day, and we decided to do a Facebook Live event. So essentially, we invited a whole bunch of nonprofit leaders down to give us a little bit of insight into what their organization does. I think it's really important to find out um, what they're doing in terms of the outreach in the community and where your money goes if you donate to them. So I want to take you inside and, and let you have a look at that. Hey guys, how are ya? We are at my studio, Inspired Media 360. I just wanted to give you a little look at what's going on around here because uh, we're doing a live event today to try to bring attention to AZ Gives. Here's Lisa Geyser. Hello, Lisa. Hello. How are you? Great. Tell them about your charity. Uh, I am with Families Giving Back, and we are a nonprofit that brings family volunteer opportunities to families with small kids of any age, and we are so excited to be here, part of Arizona Gifts Day. So Lisa is about to go on set with me, and she always loves to go live, right? Yes, yes. I love it. <laughs> this is Laura Capello. Hi. Hi. I tell them, a lot of people know both of you guys, but tell them a little bit about what you guys do. So I just had the opportunity to go on live with Carrie to talk about Big Brothers Big Sisters and the need for mentors, especially men, and any kind of donation you want to give. All right, my camera work. My camera work needs a little help. I know. I know. And this is a little bit of behind the scenes here. This is my studio, guys. We call this the party room. Hi, Hi. Hi. So Hi. is here with me today. This is a little bit of my set. And um, in case you guys want to ever come down and visit me. Oh, hi, guys. Hi, everyone's Your talking. Hi, Kirk Nermy. Hi. Oh, Zenobia, your husband's online with us. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, Matt Mattel. We 
love you, Matt Mattel. He's What's probably going to be so embarrassed about that. <laughs> so look, guys, I have lots of snacks, lots of tons stuff. of coffee. Someone got into these. Though. A lot of positive sayings, if anyone wants Girl to stop visits. We have lots of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> and just show you a little bit more. I have every little trick thing yeah. going on in here. Look at all this. Um, and here's Carlos. He's working on this with me today. So here's our little mini mobile studio right here to make this Facebook Live event happen. So again, we're doing this really over on my public page, Carrie Pena. Um, but as many of you might know, I work with a lot of nonprofits and a volunteer and MC. So this day is really important to me. So come visit us over on my public page. Check it all out. And thanks, guys. Hi, Jennifer Gage. She runs an amazing nonprofit as well. So I'll talk to you guys soon. It was a pretty amazing day. We were live for um, over eight hours. Yes. Thank you so much. You were there helping me. Um, and I had, what, how many cups of coffee throughout the day? Um, I lost Quite count, a few. To be um, but the important thing, and, and, and Mose, you touched on this about sort of with the rebranding of Arizona. What struck me um, in terms of Arizona Gives Day is that there are such a powerful um, spirit of giving. There is mm -hmm. such a powerful spirit of giving and community in Arizona, and in particular happening in Phoenix with Local First and all these cool things. A day like Arizona Gives, where they're raising millions of dollars for all these nonprofits, is another step forward, right, in that whole rebrand. It, it certainly is, you know, and, I, and Arizona's had a, a bad rap, I guess, before I even got here, you know, with uh, 1070 and all the other things that went on. But uh, yeah, I think Arizona Gives Day is a great campaign, and uh, and we certainly participate in that uh, as a county and uh, try to be a part of that, at least on the, on the social level, and, and we have our own charitable campaign campaign at the county and, and you give our employees give hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year yeah. to uh, local nonprofits. So that align with county priorities, you know, yeah. things like the Human Services Campus is a, is a big priority for us and we have a lot of uh, investment in that over the years. So, so you encourage the employees to take you know, part, and I love that. It was something we didn't talk about, but along what you're, you're asking about now is people might not realize this whenever it comes to government organizations. People there are there a lot of times, and I didn't realize this, I was very cynical about it when I got there, but it's, they're there because it, they're serving their community mm -hmm. in many ways. And people still look at government as service, and it's not just to say it, and maybe politicians just say well, it. Well, you know, I think that's a good point because there are a lot of people who could go out in the private sector and sure. get m jobs that pay much more mm -hmm. than government jobs. But I think that you're making a really important point because I think government, a lot of times now, it's a, it, becomes, it gets a bad rap. So I think that that is a very, very yeah. important point you're making. A lot of good. Well, it's, a, it's an service. invisible thing in our lives yeah. until we hit the pothole that until we don't like, or, right. or you know, or they send you the tax bill. Right. And yeah. uh, and so we and we understand that. Yeah. But there are a lot of people doing doing things that make a difference in your life, and you don't notice it because they're doing right. their job. Yeah, I love yeah, it. And that's important. Yeah, okay, now we're going to vibe with Zenobia okay, and let's get it. this field. Today we're talking about, I never thought you, you probably didn't think you were going to come here and talk about um, what are you inflatable, inflatable oh, loungers, <laughs> inflatables. We're going to need an it away. I, I hope you have pictures of this <laughs> yeah, to show I love it. <laughs> Yes, actually we're showing a video of um, my children. We were approached in Barcelona last summer. We were on a trip and we were standing out in front of the Gaudi Museum and all of a sudden this company came up and started blowing up these colorful objects and my kids immediately went over and sat on them and that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted to see how people would react to these inflatable loungers which are now making their way through Europe. They've seen a lot on the East Coast. They are basically lounge chairs, lounge hammocks. Some of them are actually look like sofas and it's just a way to relax, take something easy to a park, to a music festival. Start up conversation. Snack Wrap it up and go. And so they, they're very ingenious and they're a ton on the market. You kind of have to watch the brand you're getting. They range from $16 to up to $60. Amazon's a great place to look. So, and the way they work is funny because you're thinking, okay, they're inflatable. I don't want to carry around a pump or something. You literally take the bag and you have to run in circles. The videos are hilarious. <laughs> to fill it up? And to fill it up. So if it's a windy place or a windy day, you have that silly moment for just a moment. But in Arizona, <laughs> you feel like running around for a while. So I think they're making 
making their way here. And then you roll it up and they can hold air for f five to six hours. Oh, wow. Kids love them and they're colorful. Take them, take them everywhere. It's, Zenobia's it's cool. always ahead of the trends. Yes. And now sure. we're gonna go out um, for lunch with mom. I told you we have some restaurant reviews on the show. Uh -huh. David Lux, our friend, and his mama Lux go out to lunch every mm -hmm. Saturday. And um, most recently, they went to check out Sam Fox's new place. And goes without saying, it's already probably it's like blowing hot up. and packed mm -hmm. and, and amazing in there. So he says, uh, this Saturday, Mama Lux and I tried out Sam Fox's latest restaurant, Doe Bird. Started off with a light salad and then split the prime rib sandwich, which looks super yummy, mm. and a really tasty pizza. The place was packed, he says, with great energy and a friendly staff. It is definitely another hit. And mm. then he goes on to say, we finished off the day with a hot fudge sundae at <laughs> Kramer Street. The weather largely cooperated. It was a perfect Saturday here in the Valley of the Sun. Have you guys been to Kramer Street? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's so uh, Where is that one at? There's several. Um, the one that we go to, there's one by uh, Fashion Square. Okay. So much fun. So have you been to Dobird yet? I have not. Where's right. that? Now you now you got your homework checklist and I, I know. Arcadia. I, I'm just amazing. Arcadia. It's, it's Arcadia. Mm -hmm. I thought I I've seen an ad for it and you know it's on the list, of course. Yeah, we so. like to check out all the new restaurants, big mm -hmm. or small. This one yep. is, happens to be like a powerhouse, but we also like to check out little mom and pop. I don't know how Sam Fox continues to come up with different menu. Items. He, he's so, really <laughs> he's such, speaking <laughs> of Melissa. innovators. Um so as we wrap, Phil, just leave the audience with kind of a final word. Um you being in this new phase of your life, trying to get out there and shake shake it up a little bit and do something differently um, you know what is your word of inspiration to people who might be looking at you and wanting to do the same you always ask me the tough questions <laughs> don't you? so the word of inspiration um, I, I think that you can't be afraid if you're not happy where you are or you're bored where you are or, or you you just need something different for your family life whatever it might be you got to try something new I got an amazing opportunity with the county and so and your opportunity might not be a director, but you might, but it might be something that leads to that possibility down the road. Yeah. So don't be afraid of a new industry. I tell people all the time that come from our former industry, uh, news and journalism, I say, you're not selling yourself as the former TV person. You're selling yourself for the skills you have and your ability to, to speak to people and understand people and consolidate information into an understandable format. Those are skills that are tangible. And uh, so take your skills, whatever they might be, and, uh, and that's what you're selling. Yeah. Not selling what you're doing now. I love that. And I also love that I'm your favorite co anchor ever <laughs> in the world. Field, you, need, you need a trophy or something that says that? I need a trophy. I need an Emmy. A sad more do you need? Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, we loved Thank having you, you as our co host. And thanks to all of you for being with us in the moment. We are here every Wednesday. Our mission is to motivate, uh, move, and inspire. You can always find all of our shows and content, including uh, Zenobia's great column, uh, Z Life, on inspiredmedia360.com. Also, you can check us out on Facebook and on, um, what else? Twitter, YouTube and Instagram, everything yeah. at Inspired Media 360, yeah, Instagram. Um, we just want to make sure that you're going out there and living in the moment. Take care, everyone.